Hi ho folks, it's Andrew Glazer from the Glazer Tutoring Company, and today I would like to teach you how to use the remainder theorem to find the remainder of this complicated polynomial division. So we have to keep in mind what the remainder theorem is. The remainder theorem basically says that when you have a function f of x, which in this problem, that's what this thing represents, and it's being divided then by a linear function of the kind that has this form x minus k. It, which in this problem, here it is, right? This is known as your divisor and see how it is a linear function. I know it's a plus here and that's a minus, but don't worry about that for the moment. Whenever you have this setup, when you have a function, however complicated it is, divided then by a linear function, the remainder of this division will be equal to the function's value, this function's value, evaluated at k, whatever this thing is. So, Two ways to find k. One way is to use this model and try to match it up to the linear function you're given. So what I do here is I write x minus k. And I realize this x is fine, that's great, but I realize I have a problem with the sign here, okay? Now, you have to match this up to this model. So in other words, you're gonna take this x and then you're gonna switch this sign, make it a minus, but you cannot plug in a six here because x minus six is not the same thing as x plus six. So what you have to do is you basically have to flip the sign, so to speak, of your six. Now, if you notice, this is x minus k. This is your k. And if you were to simplify this or distribute the negative, it would be x plus six, which is identical to what was given, all right? So basically, your k value here using this method is going to be negative 6. That's the k value. I don't really like that method, but that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to literally take this linear function, just set that bad boy equal to 0, solve it for x, and then just know that whatever you whatever x is here is your k value. All right? It's so much easier. That's the k value. Okay? Now, this actually works nicely because if you have... Uh, let's say a coefficient in front of x, this model doesn't really work very well. But this will still allow you to solve for k. So if this were 2x plus 6, it doesn't fit this nicely. Uh, but you can you do 2x plus 6 here, and then your k, your k value would have been negative 3. And you can still use it, okay? So now that we found our k value, it's negative 6. What this then is saying to us is that the remainder of this division is going to be equal to the function's value evaluated at k. In other words, the function's value evaluated when all the x's in your function is negative 6. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this function and plug in negative 6 everywhere you see uh, x. Okay, so minus 4. Definitely using a calculator on this one, I can tell you that right now. Uh, plug in a negative 6 there, that's great. Then plus 3x, oh no, no, negative 6, whoops, cubed, oh my god. Really? They had to give us something this long? Negative 6 squared plus x minus 1. Whoop, one little mistake. Don't remember that x should be a negative 6, okay? All right, now plug that on into the calculator. Okay, this looks a little strange, but hopefully we're right. I got a negative 44,791. All right. Now, I, I double checked it. That should be good. Um, but what I think I want to do is I want to try to do the synthetic division on this. Um, this one's going to be a little crazy. I'm going to run through it uh, just to kind of double check. So if you want to keep watching, go for it. If you want to turn me down, go for it. Um, but there's another way to do the problem as well. Uh, but that's by doing synthetic division. So let's take a look. And by the way, remember, this value represents the remainder. This is the remainder. Okay, negative 44,791. Bam. So to figure out the number of columns here that should go into your synthetic division table, you have to look at the highest power of x and add 1 to it. So I know that I need 6 columns. So this is going to represent the uh, x to the 5th coefficient. This is x to the 4th. And we're going to keep on counting down here until we get to our constant. Okay, that's x to the 1st, which is x, and then your constant. So the coefficient of the uh, x to the 5th term is a 5. The next one is a negative 4. The next one is a 3. The next one is a negative 2. The next one is 1. The next one is negative 1. Then what you're going to do is you're going to, to figure out the number that goes out there. You're going to take your divisor, x plus 6, set x plus 6, blah, 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 
set it equal to zero and solve x, and that's gonna then be negative six, the value you're gonna plug in out here. And doesn't that process seem uh, similar to what we did? Now, all you're gonna do is take the five, you gotta drop this first term straight on down, okay? So you're gonna put a five. Now you just gotta follow a simple series of steps here. What's going on? What's going on? Oh, there we go. Take the bottom number, five, multiply it by the negative six, and you're gonna get negative 30. You plug that into the next column, add it together. So this should be negative 34. Then you're gonna take negative 34, multiply it by the negative six, and you can plug in that result into the next column, and I think I'm gonna use my calculator for this one. So negative 34, just to save a little time. So this is gonna be uh, 204. Okay, then you're gonna add those terms together, so that should be 207. Oops, 207. Then you're gonna take the 207 and multiply it, sorry, by the negative six. So take 207 times then negative six, and that becomes a negative. You see how this thing's kind of getting kind of huge already? 1,242. Add this on up, so that should be negative 1,244. Then take the negative 1,244, multiply it by negative six, oh my goodness. Then that's going to be positive 7,464. Add that together, so that's 7,465. Then take the 7,460, 7,465. Multiply them by the negative six. So that should be now a negative 44,790. So minus one then on the top, and that's negative 44,791. Which, lo and behold, ladies and gentlemen, that's the value we found before. Okay, that is the remainder. So as you can see, you can do it both ways, but honestly, who wants to do synthetic division and figure this out? The other way is a lot easier. Remainder theorem, all the way, 100%. Take care, guys. Thanks so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. If this helped you out at all, if you don't mind telling some of your classmates, helping us spread the word, it really would mean the world to us. And uh, we love all the support that we've been getting. So thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We really appreciate it. We want to keep producing more content for you. Check out our channel because we have thousands of videos, not only math, but physics and chemistry as well. I'll see you soon.